Now, Lars, I need you to know something. You're the reason your mother and I drink before noon. Don't worry, though, it's decaf. He's a silly guy, him, that Lars Wingefers. He's once again gunning for the position of most hated man in gaming. He shows promise, but without a few sexual harassment investigations, he won't be dethroning Bobby Kotick anytime soon. Nah, no, Lars keeps his bad business on the field. His company, Embracer Group, is responsible for thousands of layoffs, oodles of studio shutdowns, and gaggles of unannounced game cancellations, but let's be honest here. The average gamer doesn't care about any of that stuff. It's just the nature of things. People are busy enough as it is, trying to find the willpower to put away the laundry instead of endlessly relocating it from bed to the basket and back to the bed. So don't expect them to know what happens behind the scenes of their favorite hobby. Most people just won't care until the problem reaches their front door. So I'll give you something to care about, you casual. Lars has come knocking and he's preaching the good word of raising video game prices. Why? Because Lars has made a few teensy tiny mistakes that have cost him a lot of money. See, Lars is a compulsive flipper. He makes his wealth by buying stuff and reselling it. He can't help himself. At age 13, he sold secondhand comic books. At age 16, he founded Nordic Games to sell used video games. Being a middleman's in his DNA, but theoretically, it comes with a limit. Assuming you're the best middleman this side of the Mississippi, you run out of stuff to sell eventually. Middlemen don't control the quality or rate of production, and if they scale up their organization too much, then things get more expensive and your entire business model could collapse due to poor corporate structure. What was I? Ah, oh, yeah. Nordic Games collapsed due to poor corporate structure. Lars sold it off, and it still didn't do well. Then he bought it back for about seven cents. Right? What the hell? They really do just give C-suite positions away to anyone. He reformed the company to focus on selling newly released games, and it promptly went bankrupt again in 2004. Steve Jobs made it look easy, my friend, but it takes more than a black turtleneck and blue jeans to be a frontman. Lars returned to his flipping ways, his comfort zone. Nordic Games was reformed to Game Outlet Europe. Plan this time was to buy unsold inventory from big game companies like EA, repackage them, and sell them on the international market. They did, anyway, they did well enough to start up the Nordic Games publishing branch where they tried to fill in the gaps of the video game market. Like Lars noticed, Nintendo didn't have karaoke games, so they made We Sing, and followed it up with Dance Party Club hits. But this wasn't enough for Lars. He had bigger flipping ambitions. March 2011, Lars gave birth to Nordic Games Holding. A holding company is basically a get out of jail free card. If something bad happens with your business and you end up owing investors a lot of money, you can just shut down the business, dissolve it into the holding company, and you can't be sued. From 2011 to 2018, Lars' holding company slowly collected game IPs. They slurped up cock me. They slurped up cock media, and everything they owned to get Dead Island, Saints Row, Payday, and Shadow Warrior, among others. Buying up Coffee Stain Studios gave them control over Deep Rock Galactic, Goat Simulator, Valheim, Satisfactory. All in all, a lot of smaller games with devout fan bases and a couple of big hitters. The holding company went through a lot of name changes, but eventually ended up as Embracer Group in 2019. From 2019 to 2022, Embracer Group went on a shopping spree and gained control of over 80 companies in the gaming space. Embracer then owned classics like Tomb Raider, Deus Ex, Thief, and The Lord of the Rings. The The Lord of the Rings. Dr. Tolkien's creative works are property of Embracer Group. Lars was trying to accrue value to attract investors. It's like installing a pool in your backyard to try and raise the property value of your house and catch the eyes of people who are into buying houses that come with pools. Except instead of a swimming pool, Lars installed a water park and was trying to woo Saudi Arabia. Long, possibly shady story short, the Saudi Arabian government wanted to grow their own gaming scene and invest in the international one, so they formed Savvy Games Group in 2021. May 2022, they invested a billion dollars into Embracer Group to gain 8% stake in the company. 
September 2022, Savvy Games Group publicly announced their plan to invest $37.8 billion into the video game industry, with $13.3 billion of that going to acquiring prominent developers, publishers, and IP. Embracer smugly sitting in the corner going, tee hee, that's me. That's me. It looked like their hoarding habit was about to pay off, until it didn't. October 2022, Savvy Games had verbally agreed to invest $2 billion more into Embracer Group, but walked away from the deal May 2023. Uh-oh. Embracer Group now had a water park to maintain, employees to pay, and not enough money flowing in. Worse, they had a CEO who was a one-trick pony and didn't know how to make good games. June 2023 to May 2024, Embracer Group cut over 4,500 employees, closed down over 40 studios, and canceled 80 in-development projects. Sure, they made $3.5 billion in sales that fiscal year, but that's the easy part. A monkey with a tie and no degree can cut costs. Most of their games, like Dead Island, Saints Row, and Alone in the Dark, practically sold themselves on game recognition and expectations. What's going to be harder is getting rid of the $1.5 billion of debt they have left over and getting into the green now that they've shut down the studios and squandered the reputation of those beloved names. Bracer Group is a name that can't be trusted. Not by developers, not by investors, not by people who buy games. And Lars can't help but make it worse every time he opens his mouth. Probably thinks, how much worse can it get? I'm already in the gutter. When asked what the big deal was with all the layoffs, he responded, They're a natural part of life. Ah, the Lion King defense, a classic. Everyone has to go through them, and his duty was first and foremost to the shareholders. Every other interview since then has been a pity party. The world has changed. It's a tricky market when you don't really have something standing out catching the eye of the consumer. Say it ain't so, Lars. People won't buy stuff if you have nothing worth selling. If it can happen to you, it can happen to me. It can happen to anyone. But it's in the most recent interview that Lars blames the price of video games for creating razor-thin margins that he can't profit from. I love how he can't help but say the quiet part out loud. What he's saying is he, like many executives, are the real redundancies. They themselves make nothing of value. Cut those who do, and take it out on the customers. What a coincidence that there's always too many game developers, and that AI is going to help streamline their jobs, but for some reason there's always just the right amount of executives, and their jobs to point out what to buy and sell couldn't possibly be automated. But Lars is also a coward. Because he doesn't have the Swedish meatballs to raise the price of his own games. Sure, he says he believes that the current price of games is stuck where it is because of tradition. No one has tried raising prices, he says. People would be more than willing to pay more money, which would in turn provide funding for bigger and better games. Go on then, Lars. How many games does Embracer Group control? Toss a few out there at a hundred bucks a pop. No. He was out at the last second. It's something we have been discussing, but we are currently sticking to the practice of the industry. Would it be the one company one day that tries to increase pricing? That remains to be seen. It's always these flaccid middlemen signaling to each other. You go first. No, you go. You go. Or just speaking into the ether the way Mike Ibarra does when he muses on social media about how nice it would be if games had tipping. Wouldn't that be nice? It's never, oh, what if we lowered our pay? What if we didn't overspend in hopes of attracting a buyer for a change? What if we didn't overspend in hopes of attracting a Saudi Arabian oil prince? Even my grandmother doesn't fall for that one. I don't blame them though, it's what they do. They're flippers. It's the only game they know. To a hammer, every problem is a nail. To a middleman, every problem is someone else's problem. And it is their right to speak their mind as much as it is mine to clown them at every turn. Nay, my civic duty. And I will do it in the exact same way they do. Out loud, musing rhetoric. Won't someone rid me of these turbulent executives in a non-violent hypothetical way, like making them redundant with machine learning, 
It's not like the machine would have to learn too much. Call it my AI CEO, perhaps. This video is sponsored by My Lovely Empress, a narrative-driven kingdom management game inspired by a mix of East and Southeast Asian mythology. Now to wishlist my lovely empress and play the demo today. I'll do it myself. How hard could it be? In main void, print F, hello world, return zero. This gives it a naive innocence about it. You won't suspect anything until after you've been shafted. And by then it'll be too late. And then it's a bunch of if then statements. If profit greater than loss, invest. If loss profit, wait, no, 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 no. If loss greater than profit, then invest with debt. If stock growth less than 0.25, then make fool of self on Twitter. No such thing as bad publicity and all that. Oh my God, no, what did I do? Left out a comma somewhere. It won't stop posting on Twitter. <laughs> 